Okay, for the first of our uh, hardware tutorials, we're going to start with the basic easy ones. And we're going to look at magnetic fasteners. These are something that um, they literally cost a few pounds. You can buy them from eBay or you can buy them from any of the big um, hardware suppliers. And you often get a bag with maybe 10 in and they literally cost very little. There are differences in quality. Some of them don't have as much magnetism as others. Some of them are a little less shiny than others. Um, but they're all, they all very functional. They come in two sizes, um, the 18 millimeter and the 14 millimeter. You have two pieces, the male and the female. Um, I'm not gonna give you a biology lesson because that's not what we're here for. Um, this one is the male for obvious reasons and they fit together as males and females are supposed to do apparently. Um, you usually get them with a couple of washers. Um, the 14 millimeters are exactly the same, they're just a little bit narrower across so you've got the male and the female. Now these ones are narrow ones so they don't, they don't stand too proud away from your fabric. These ones are just a bit thicker so they do tend to sit a little bit further away from your fabric i like the narrow ones but they're not so easy to find in the the bigger size um, the small ones also come with a uh with a washer to fit on or two washers usually move those out of the way and get the next piece out as with most hardware um they come in a variety of colors so i have um gold i have um the sort of, I can't even think what it's called now, uh, the blacker colour, the metallic black, um, the rose gold. They also come in um, the rainbow and all the finishes that you would expect to find hardware in. Um, so what do we need to fit a set of uh, magnetic fasteners? This is what I use. Not what everybody uses, just what I use. So I've got a Frixon pen just to mark uh, where I need to put things. I have a craft knife and I like to make the holes in my fabric with a craft knife because I have more control. Some people like to use a um, thread cutter, so a, um, a stitch, a seam ripper rather, not thread cutter. And I've got two little bits of uh, scrap faux leather, um, which I'm going to use to strengthen the area that I'm putting it. And bag maker's friend, some duct tape. So without further ado, let's, I've got two pieces of fabric. We're going to say this is one and this is the other. And I need my magnetic fastener to go between the two. So let's start. I'm just going to use this larger one. And I'm going to use the washer to mark where I need to make my, uh, my cuts. Now, most patterns that use one of these will give you a placement mark for your magnetic fastener. And the placement mark should be in that central circle. So once you've got that central circle over the placement mark, you can transfer the placement mark from your pattern piece to your fabric. You just need to mark the two lines, one either side. And you can remove your washer. You can see we have those two lines. Now, I like to just use my craft knife to go through. Now this is, this fabric is not interfaced, but I've got a bit of foam behind it. So I need my cuts to go through both bits of, both of the fabric and the foam behind. Some patterns will tell you to go through, um, just, just will want you to work with just the fabric. And if you're putting one of these on just fabric and no foam behind, I would also always advise putting a little, a small piece of Decoville light on the back of your fabric where you're going to make your cuts just to strengthen it. Now you can add um, a little bit of fray check here if you want to. Just, oh, I haven't got my fray tack, don't know what I'm doing fray check. Um, oh, this is the one. Um, you can pop a little bit of fray check onto those cuts if you're worried about fraying. Um, I don't very often do that, to be fair. You can either use fray check or you could use a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue. Um, I never do it if, if it's faux leather because faux leather doesn't fray. Um, most quilting cottons, if they've been interfaced, won't fray. Um, but some of the uh, looser weave sort of linen fabrics will fray. So it's worth using a little bit of something underneath there. A little bit of fray check um, if you're using a sort of a looser weave type fabric. 
So I've made my two cuts. I'm going to take my first piece of um, hardware and I'm just going to pop the prongs on the back through both layers. You can see there that they're sticking out the back. Everything's lovely. Now, you can just put the washer on and push the prongs whichever way you want them to go if you want to. I like to add an extra little bit of stabilisation. This is going to take quite a lot of pulling. The magnetic fastener will put, it might be on a flap or something like that. So it's going to be constantly pulled and pulled and pulled. And you don't want it to pull through your fabric. So extra stabiliser is, is a really good idea. Now that can be a little bit of Peltex or a little bit of Decaville. Or me, I like to use tiny scraps of faux leather. So I've just marked where the two holes are on my using the, the washer. I'm just going to pop that over the top of the washer, of the prongs. Now I'm going to add the washer. I'm going to push it down with my fingers and I push my prongs out to either side. Now, if you push them over into on top of each other, it will be just as secure. The only difference is they will overlap slightly and you'll end up with a slight lump on the back of your magnetic fastener. Um, and that doesn't impact the way this side of the magnetic fastener works. But if you're then going to make a bag and you're going to have lining fabric against it, over time, those prongs will rub on this lining fabric and you will, you can see there if I push it, those prongs are actually quite visible. Um, they will make a hole. They will wear on the inside of your bag as you put things in, in and out of your bag. You will end up with a hole. If I push it down, you can see that. Um, now, if you pushed your prongs into the centre, it's even more noticeable. However, to avoid the prongs touching anything, a little tiny bit of duct tape is the way to go. Let's just pull that in half so I can... Oh, I've just made a right pig's ear of that. Um, and if you put it across the back of your hardware, and this is a bit jazzy, it's literally... It covers up all those sharp edges. So when you put your lining fabric inside of your bag, you can run your finger across it and it doesn't feel sharp anywhere. So that's one side fitted. We're going to follow the exact same process for the second side. So finding the marking on your pattern that shows you where it's going to go. Making the marks using the little washer. So for me, a craft knife is the way forwards. I'm just double checking that I've gone through both layers. Do be careful with a craft knife. Spray check if you feel you want to. It, so that's very much dependent on the fabric. Put the other half in so that the prongs are coming out at the back. Find your little bit of faux leather that you've got as a spare. Make the cut marks in that and push it on. your washer push the washer down you must make sure it's nice and tight and sturdy you don't want the whole thing to be kind of baggy on the front a little bit of duct tape and the job is done you can see that they go together beautifully and pull apart beautifully. So this might be the flap of a bag and this might be the body of the bag. If I'm doing a bag with a, with a magnetic fastener, I would always put the thicker part onto the body and the thinner part onto the flap. Um, and there you go. One magnetic fastener, easy peasy. So we'll move on to the next um, set of hardware in, in my next video.